you for being with me and I want you to just listen for a little bit while you have your morning coffee. One of the things I do besides being a retired college teacher in music is work with people with dementia and music. You may have been to my site or you may have heard about me. I'm the president of Dementia Sing-Along Therapy. Why would something so simple work better than a prescribed medicine? The hottest prescribed medicine out on the market. Why? I believe it's because singing unites these various areas and creates bridges. The emotional memories that we have associated with music are so deep inside us. And while you are sort of wondering what you can do with your time during the COVID crisis, who knows how much longer we'll be here, you might want to take this time to learn something new, a new skill. And so I've decided to create this 12 week training program for leading dementia sing along therapy groups. They're called memory choirs because they bring up wonderful memories and they create social interaction and they improve the brain immensely fast. And a professor from Western Washington University hired me to work with his wife. She was fifth or sixth stage dementia. She had Alzheimer's in, in, really in the final stages. And at the time I did not think that I would be helpful but I thought, well, maybe I can wake her up a little, cheer her up. And so I took the suggestion that I work with her. I said, sure, I'll try it. And then I started doing some really light versions of the exercises that I taught in college. I taught at Berkeley College of Music for nine years. And I taught at Selkirk College of Music in British Columbia. So I started doing a really diluted version of those college exercises I would do with vocalists. And it worked. Surprisingly, she started waking up. And before I knew it, even on the first day, she started humming along with me on all the songs, just humming along. The next week I saw her, she started singing along and she was alert. Her body was there in the room with me. So that was exciting. The third week, and I'm not lying to you, this is why I got into this, the third week, she came into the room on a walker. That's how quickly things started to evolve. And I knew something was up. So I continued to work with uh, this woman and on the week five, week five, she came into the room without a walker. Mind you, as all this is going on, certain songs like Moon River, for instance, from the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's, Moon River, that was a magic sort of uh, event for her. To hear that song was a magic event and her eyes would light up and she would start joining in. And really, she sang all the words to that before very much time went along. I threw myself into other nursing homes to see if the same thing would work with other people. And it did. And why? Why did it work with other people? When you do the sequence of exercises, you are Number one, getting your oxygen going. Very, very important to wake up the breath, to really get diaphragmatic breathing going, and then the oxygen starts. Number two, relaxing your larynx and getting your body ready to sing. And after that, 
you begin to wake up the brain. So I do a few scales with people and then we start singing songs that a person knew when they were very, very young, super young, like seven years old. And surprisingly, people with Alzheimer's and several other uh, dementia related ailments can remember things from when they were seven or eight. It's very surprising. So I will work with this person and one of the first things I'll do is start with a song that maybe they learned when they were seven years old or a song that maybe they learned from their grandmother or grandfather and we will start working on these these tunes. I ended up touring around the whole U.S. working with big groups to just to see if this was a consistent thing and yes consistently between 75 and 80 percent of the residents I would work with improved drastically fast. Some of them improved within 45 minutes. They were starting to tell me things and uh, tell me stories and share things with me when they hadn't even been speaking for, for maybe months or in some cases years. And of course, singing some of these early memories brings back things from when you were seven years old, nine years old. What about memories from your wedding, your first dance? What about high school football games? What about the first baseball game you ever went to? So if you think about it, these are all very, very rich memories and the brain is stimulated. We call them memory choirs 